Windows Azure Virtual Machines were introduced as a preview in the June 2012 release of Windows Azure. They're fully functional virtual machines based on Windows or Linux and hosted in one of Microsoft's Windows Azure cloud data centers around the world. Windows Azure virtual machines can be created in three ways. Through the management portal, through scripting, or through a REST API. The simplest way is to use the Windows Azure management portal and create one of the stock machines. The list is continually growing, but currently you can create a Windows Server 2008 R2 SP1 with SQL Server 2012 Evaluation Edition, a vanilla Windows Server 2008 R2 SP1, a Windows Server 2012 VM, an OpenLogic CentOS 6.2 VM, a SUSE Linux Enterprise Server VM, an Ubuntu Server 12.04 LTS, and OpenSUSE 12.1 VM. Or you can select from a library of other machines you've created yourself in the past. You can customize and generalize one of the stock images so that anytime you need to deploy a, B a VM with that particular setup and collection of applications installed, it can be done easily. The other way is to create a VM in your on-premises environment using Hyper-V and copy the VM to the Windows Azure cloud. This way, you can copy an existing VM with, say, a complicated app setup and OS modifications already made. You'll probably have to make a few modifications, such as networking, so it fits into its new infrastructure, but it's a fast way of getting the cloud advantage. The optimal way of getting maximum cloud advantage is to migrate the app to a Windows Azure cloud service. This is different to a virtual machine, and will usually involve some remedial work on the application. But once done, you'll never ever have to manage any aspects of infrastructure again, not even security fixes, OS patches and service packs. However, VMs do give a very useful ramp onto that platform when you have a need to move an application into a super reliable, available, scalable infrastructure. Imagine your organization has a server dedicated to a critical yet simple quarterly reporting application. It's only ever used for three days at the end of each quarter. It's an old, custom-built application. The source code was lost many years ago. The knowledge and expertise that built it have disappeared into the ether, and it only has a GUI-based setup program. It's not a great candidate for a Windows Azure cloud service, but it'll work perfectly as a Windows Azure virtual machine. You can either install a stock operating system and then install the app using RDP, or copy the VHD file it sits on in your on-premises data center to the cloud and boot it up for three days at the end of each quarter. It'll only cost you three times 24 hours per quarter of billing, or 288 hours per year. The smallest VM size would cost $5.76 per year to run the application, probably much less expensive than the electricity alone of running it on-premises. At the other extreme, you might want to deploy SharePoint to a Windows Azure virtual machine. That means also deploying SQL Server and Active Directory, and it may also need you to create a virtual network between your on-premises data center and the resources you have deployed in Windows Azure. This complex infrastructure, which you might want to make highly available with server farms, is a great candidate to run on Windows Azure virtual machines. You might also have a web-based line of business application that's used for 24 hours at the end of each month. The team that wrote it still exists, and all the knowledge and skills that we use to build it are still available. Although this application would work fine in a Windows Azure virtual machine, it's a much better candidate for a Windows Azure cloud service. See the separate video on Windows Azure cloud services. Virtual machine disks are persisted across reboots. There are two types of disks operating system disks and data disks. Moving a data disk is simple, just copy the VHD file to blob storage. To move an operating system disk, use the CS upload tool, and this will also prepare the disk for use in Windows Azure. Virtual machines enjoy a 99.95% availability service level agreement when two or more VMs are placed into the same availability set. That's less than 4 hours 23 minutes of downtime per year. A single virtual machine enjoys a service level agreement of 99.9% .9 availability. That's less than 8 hours 46 minutes of downtime per year. An availability set is where two VMs are distributed across two different fault domains. 
Different fault domains isolate common pieces of infrastructure from each other, such as power supplies, battery backup units, networking, routers, that kind of thing. With virtual machines, disks are persistent across reboots. Each VM has a C and a D drive. C holds the operating system and D is a non-persistent cache disk. You can add a further 16 data drives. Each can be a maximum of one terabyte. They use blob storage behind the scenes. Each blob is written to the data center three times on three separate fault domains, so you don't really need to worry about the availability of your data. For this reason, you can create a stripe set across all 16 data drives, giving you a very large 16 terabyte drive with incredibly high levels of data availability and, as you'll find, phenomenal performance. You can therefore use Windows Azure virtual machines to create high performance, highly available multi-tier solutions. By following a few tips, such as making sure you create availability sets, the software fabric that controls the Windows Azure data centers will automatically provision your machines across fault boundaries. You can connect virtual machines to the same load balancer so that IP traffic is balanced across the different machines in your application. A load balancer uses a virtual IP address or VIP. Any traffic coming into your application from the internet goes to the VIP. The load balancer then routes that traffic to one of the virtual machines you connected to the router in a round-robin fashion. You can also use a range of patterns for connecting your virtual machines to Windows Azure Cloud services. In summary, Windows Azure virtual machines were introduced in the June 2012 release of Windows Azure. They are inexpensive and allowed you to scale up through VM size selection or scale out by connecting many VMs to the same externally facing load balancer. They enable you to build highly available applications and their great advantage is that you can typically move an existing on-premises application to the Windows Azure cloud very quickly. And if you want to learn more about Windows Azure, then the first thing to do is to get the free Windows Azure trial. It's a 90-day trial. Um, you can get that at http colon slash slash bit.ly bit.ly bit slash azure for free numeral for azure for free um, I also blog about Windows Azure things and that's the Planketronics blog it's spelt with two X's blogs.msdn.com slash Planketronics with two X's and then of course there's the Windows Azure site windowsazure.com <laughs>